I have always loved the band Emerson Lake and Palmer, mostly because of the amazingly talented keyboardist Keith Emerson, normally considered the best keyboardist in rock and roll. In addition to an organ he abuses on stage, he has a giant panel of knobs that looks to be from outer space. This is his Moog modular. As a keyboard player myself, I have always dreamed of owning my own modular synth. When I found out a lot of the original work on the Moog took place at Hofstra University where my dad works, I got to take a closer look at it. With some experience building a working Moog theremin, I thought it would be possible to build a full synthesizer. I was alarmed to find my school's piano missing. I went searching for it and found it half wrecked in the dumpster, but the keys were for the most part intact. So I jumped into the dumpster and pulled the keys out of a puddle of melted snow and garbage and carried it up an icy hill to hide it in the music room. My first task was to get the action back in the keys and build the framework to hold them in. I had lots of help from my piano and organ teacher, Ken Soul, who is an amateur woodworker. I then did lots of research on what I actually needed to make the synth work. Finding most schematics was not as hard as I thought, so I chose the design for a voltage-controlled oscillator, a low-frequency oscillator, a ladder filter based on the original Moog designs, an envelope generator, and a voltage-controlled amplifier. The difficult part was finding a method of making the contacts on the keys into a control voltage, because most homemade synthesizers are controlled from a digital MIDI input. But after spending hours on the internet learning how everything worked, I had a plan for a 64-key keyboard scanning matrix. To finance this project, which quickly became expensive as soon as I got involved with the electronics, I found some odd jobs. I babysat kids, and I subbed in as an organist at local churches. I ordered parts from suppliers around the world to find exactly what I needed to make the synth, and they finally arrived. I began the long process of building my own circuit boards from scratch. First, I had to etch the copper. After a lot of failed attempts with transferring the image, I finally managed to get it right and I etched six boards. I drilled hundreds of holes with a Dremel tool for the parts to be inserted into. Then I soldered the hundreds of resistors, capacitors, diodes, and transistors onto the board. Then I hooked them to potentiometers and the audio jacks that can be connected in thousands of combinations to create a variety of sounds. After that, I had to build the mounting system for the circuits in the keyboard. I took the keyboard to the Hofstra Theater Department Scene Shop, where my dad works, and got some help using the tools from Jim Hart, the shop's technical director. I drilled all the front panels and built a mounting system into the frame. One day at Hofstra, I had a very special surprise. Herb Deutsch, the original co-inventor of the Moog, stopped by to see my work. He was very interested in the fact that I was building an entirely analog synth. I'm getting very close. I've had a number of setbacks along the way, but I know soon I will have my own Moog I built myself. Herb Deutsch is really looking forward to seeing and playing it.